Today I will share some very juicy details on the upcoming 15th generation of Intel processors, codenamed Arrow Lake for both desktop and laptop. I'm talking about stuff like how many cores the 15th gen CPUs will have, when the first products will launch, and what the performance is going to be like in games as well as professional applications. But first, CDKeyOffer.com is my number one choice for when I need to buy a cheap Microsoft software key. They are a reliable provider of affordable keys to me, my friends and the channel community for over two years now, so highly recommend it. Use my discount code IVADIM to get 30% off an already amazing price and grab yourself a Windows 10 Pro for $16, Windows 11 Pro for $23 or Office 2021 for just $52. You can use PayPal for fast and secure payment and get your key instantly. Links to all these products are in the description below. Let's start with desktop CPUs. Intel will introduce the new LGA1851 socket for the 15th generation of processors. So you will need a brand new motherboard if you are planning to upgrade from 12th or 13th generation. Intel plans to manufacture the i9-15900K chips using TSMC 3 nanometer process. The upcoming CPU features 8 performance and 32 efficiency cores for a total of 40 cores and 48 threads. That is a huge increase compared to the current i9-13900K, which offers 8 performance and 16 efficiency cores for a total of 24 cores and 32 threads. The 15th Gen i9 is projected to offer 30-40% to higher single threading performance than the i9-13900K. I used the Cinebench R23 benchmark to illustrate just how much of a performance increase that is compared to the currently available Intel and AMD processors. As you can see, it is quite substantial. Multi-threading performance should be even more impressive thanks to the increased number of cores. It is projected to be 55-75% to higher than the i9-13900K. This right here is the main reason why you should consider waiting for the 15th gen to arrive if you want to build an Intel PC with an extremely powerful CPU for work. It looks like Intel plans to bring workstation class performance to the mainstream PC platform with the i9-15900K. There is one thing worth noting. Don't expect the 15900K to be cheap. Obviously, we don't know what the price will be because the product launch is still over a year away, but I expect the 15900K to cost more than the 13900K for sure. When it comes to performance in games, allow me to share my own prediction, since there is no leaked information to feast on just yet. I expect the 15900K to bring 20-30% to higher FPS in games compared to its predecessor, the 13900K. Let's move on to the i7-15700K. Instead of using its own fabs, Intel plans to manufacture the i7 at TSMC using a 3 nanometer process as well, same as for the i9. The i7-15700K features 8 performance and 16 efficiency cores for a total of 24 cores and 32 threads, just like the i9-13900K. It is interesting to see that this time around, Intel is the one who increases the core count in CPUs across the stack instead of AMD. I think this may push AMD to do the same, maybe not with the upcoming Ryzen 8000 series, but 9000 series definitely should have more cores to compete with Intel's 15th generation processors. This is the perfect example why we need healthy competition in any industry. These companies deliver proper generation over generation improvement only thanks to the competition. Obviously, the i7-15700K will not be as powerful as the i9-15900K in professional workloads, because it has significantly fewer cores. However, in games it should deliver comparable FPS because it has the same 8 performance cores, which will simply be clocked lower, hence the slightly worse performance. 
Unfortunately, the i3 and i5 15th gen processors will be the least impressive in the stack because they will use the 6 performance and 8 efficiency cores configuration. Which means that the i5 15600K will have 6 performance and 8 efficiency cores. That is the same amount as the currently available i5 13600K has. So, while the i7 and i9 parts get more cores compared to the previous generation, the i5 and i3 parts stay on the same level. It appears that Intel is not interested in stepping up the competition in the lower price segment of the market, which is responsible for the majority of total units sales. The i3-15100 will most likely have just 4 cores. Maybe, just maybe, if Intel feels generous, they may add 4 efficiency cores to that. But I do not expect to see i3 CPUs with 6 performance cores as part of the 15th generation lineup. When it comes to performance, I am eagerly anticipating the i5-15600K to take the lead and outshine all the current flagship CPUs in gaming. Intel plans to use its own 20A process to manufacture chips for the 15th generation i3 and i5 CPUs. According to the latest leaks, the 15th generation processors should launch in the last quarter of 2024. That is well over a year from now, so it is not worth waiting if you need a PC in the near future. Now let's have a look at what Intel has planned for laptops. The i5 and i7 processors will be based on the 6 performance plus 8 efficiency core chips, so expect to see core configurations similar to what we currently have inside the 13th generation i5 and i7 laptops. Intel plans to manufacture these chips on TSMC 3 nanometer process. The company does have plans to use its own 20A process to produce highly power efficient laptop CPUs, featuring up to 2 performance and 8 efficiency cores. These processes are designed for ultra thin laptops. The information about integrated graphics for laptop is scarce, but according to Moore's Law is Dead, we may see an iGPU with 192 execution units based on Intel's celestial architecture. Currently, Intel offers integrated graphics with just 96 execution units maximum, so Intel laptops will see a massive performance increase compared to the current 13th generation if the chipmaker introduces the 192 unit option. An even bigger 320 execution unit integrated graphics chip is also in the works. Both Intel and AMD are developing laptop chips with much bigger and more powerful integrated graphics. I find this development exciting because integrated graphics options are more power efficient than dedicated GPUs. Maybe one day we will get a proper Windows gaming laptop which won't have to be plugged into the wall to enjoy full CPU and GPU performance. If you don't know what I am talking about, then let me give you the TLDR. Most, if not all Windows laptops with dedicated graphics require to plug into the wall in order to experience full performance because the hardware is too power hungry to be powered by a battery. The laptop market is getting very competitive thanks to Apple, who makes powerful M1 and M2 chips. Both M1 and M2 MacBook laptops don't need to be plugged into the wall to get full performance out of the hardware and still have excellent battery life even at full load. One of the few competitive advantages Windows laptops have over Apple's MacBooks is that you can run a whole lot more games on Windows. However, that may change in the near future. Apple introduced the Game Porting Toolkit, which allows developers to easily port games made for Windows to Mac. If game developers will indeed start porting their games to Mac, then Windows laptops will start losing a lot of customers. Let me know in the comments what do you think about all this. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then I would very much appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.